Okay, let's get going. So what you have to do now is you have to get on the web page where we've got the code. And in this session, we're going to have a look through how you can plot shot positions on the pitch and how you can plot the goals and who took the shots and so on. So what you need to do is you need to get uh, onto the web page. I've got it up here. Just start here. So we're actually on the how much in my screen you can see here. I think you can probably see that bit too. So I'm going to move it down. Um, what we've got here is uh, we've got the web page and we're going to look through plotting shots. Now, because this is the first web page we're looking at, what I'm going to do is just run through how you can actually run the code. So this isn't interactive in itself. This web page just shows you all the code. It's got like this is the this is a sort of introductory bit. I'm going to go through it in a little while. Um, then we're going to plot the shots and so on. But what you need to do, and you kind of need to do this at the same time as I'm speaking, so you can kind of keep up and, and work with it, is you need to download either the Python code or the Python notebook code. So you press on that, you get these little things to download. And then once you've done that, you want to open it up. Now, remember... I think a lot of people will be using Anaconda. And in Anaconda, there's two tools which are relevant here. One is the Python notebook tool. So if you launch the Python notebook tool, you can then open the file inside your browser. And that's exactly what I've done here. And so when you open up the tool, you get the browser and you find the file. And then you'll find the plotting shots file. And you've actually got an interactive version. You can run through these different things. And as you um, run them, you'll get the plots straight up there. Now, the other way to do it, and I, I kind of personally, I work a little bit more with this normally, is loading the whole thing into Python. So in that case, you've downloaded the Python code. Just go back and show you where that is. You've, you've gone into here. You've downloaded the Python source code. And then you load it into Spider. I just need to show you where Spider is in Anaconda. So you start in the Anaconda Navigator, you launch Spider. I've launched Spider, and now I've loaded the code in here. And now I can run the code. The reason I like to do it this way is because you can actually see the variables inside here. Inside Variable Explorer, you can actually look at the data frames and have a kind of interactive feel for it. So you actually get a little bit more feel, I think, for, for what's going on in um, inside, if you run inside Spider. But it's fine. I think I'm going to work mainly in the Python, um, in the Python notebooks. But I, I, maybe I encourage you to work, work inside Spider with the examples, especially when you start coding your own stuff. Um, yeah, and the plots come out in this area of spider so you can see all the plots we're going to make are coming up there so um feel free to do it whatever way you want you see also all the comments that we have in the code they come up here so you can sort of read through it at the same time um feel free to work whatever way you want i will be not working with python just now i will be working um we're not working in spider sorry i'll be working inside the python notebook Okay, so what does it do? I mean, I, I really encourage you to, to do this yourself, but I'm just going to do a little talk through what each of the bits do. Some of you might not be very familiar with Python and not use that as a programming language before. Um, so I'll get a little bit into that. But as I've said in earlier videos, there's a bit of sort of searching on the internet to work out how things work and so on. But but here's the basic, basic structure. I start... Um, running this and the fir first thing we do is we import some libraries now the central library for this course is going to be the mpl soccer library where we're going to import the pitch um, a little library which allows us to import stats bomb data and another one called vertical pitch which is so we've got a pitch is a standard kind of um, uh, horizontal pitch, and we're also going to have vertical pitch as well. So these are these are the libraries we're going to use, as well as NumPy, which is one of the standard ones. We'll always be in use NumPy because that's used for maths, and Matplotlib is used for for plotting, and that's when we're not using the pitch function. Okay, so we're going to take a um, 
we're going to take a match from the stats bomb data. I'm not going to go into how you use the stats bomb data on your own computer just now, but you can, if you look on the on the using stats bomb data on the web page, you can find out how to load up the stats bomb data and make sure that you have access to it and you can actually use it. I've I've chosen a particular match from the Women's World Cup, which we're going to analyze. We're going to look at in the England shots and England and Sweden shots. So I'm I'm English. I live in Sweden, so I thought we'd we'd look at look at that particular match. Um, and the first thing we do is the yeah. So you have to look up the stats bomb event. That that's what I'm saying. If you're not if you haven't started thinking about how you use the stats bomb data then this is the code for that particular match um, of the of the thing. So have a, have a look there so you so you know where I got this number from. Then we're going to pick out the two teams and then we're going to pick out all the shots. Now this is a very common command. So it's worth taking a little bit more time to have a look at this. What I'm doing here is the data frame is what contains all of the events during the match that's inside the data frame and in that data frame i want to pick out all of the shots maybe i'll, I'll just do this so I'll, I'll first i'll um i'll do this i'll print um or we can do this for example df dot head that shows us the top of the data frame. So that's also what I looked at, looked at inside Spider. This is all of the data, all of the events that have happened during the match. And now if I look just at shots.head, I'll find the times of all of the shots during the match, which um, contains is a, is a shorter um, a shorter data set. And so this this picks out all of the shots um and puts them into the into the data frame shots which is a sort of sub data frame of the overall data frame. good and then then the next step is to make the shot map and i've done this in two steps the first one is using an iterative solution and i originally wrote wrote this code to, to go through it we'll go Alexander, who's the assistant on the course, he wrote the, the code I'm going to show you next, where we use a kind of more direct solution. But I wanted to give you an idea of the iterative solution, because I think many people who start with programming, they start with this idea of writing for loops to go through things. And it's certainly where I start. And so what this solution does is it's, it's going to draw a pitch using the, um, this again is using the library from MPL soccer. It's going to draw a pitch. This is the dimensions of the pitch. And then it's going to put the um, plots. It's going to plot the circles for all of the shots. And we're going to do this on an iterative way that we loop through. Um, these are the rows of the, the data frame I just showed you, the shots data frame. We're going to lo loop through the shots data frame, find the x coordinate of the shot, the y coordinate of shot, find if it was a goal or not, find out which team did it, and then we plot these. And we plot these, if, if the team is team one, which is England in this case, we plot on one side of the pitch. If the team is Sweden, then we plot on the other side of the pitch. And the, the trick here, the thing to notice is that when I want to plot on the other side of the pitch, I take the length of the pitch, which I sat, uh, sat here as 120, and the... Uh, uh, the width of the pitch, which I um, set to 80, and I take the X and the Y away from these um, particular numbers. Now, stats bomb pitches are in sizes yards. One thing that you're going to find if you're using a lot of different event data, different sources for event data, is they all have their different coordinate systems. Stats bomb use a standardized um, pitch of 120 by, by 80 yards. And so this, this reverses the two. So I think this all becomes much more clear if I just run it. And then what we see is we've iterated through, we've we've put up all of the England shots, England doing a lot of long distance shooting, including this, this attempt from out here. And then we have the, um, the goal by Kirby here is I've said, well, I'm going to plot a proper circle or a filled in circle when it's a goal. And I'm going to, 
a, a plot a sort of see-through circle with this set alpha when it's a shot. And so the see-through circles come out here and the goal comes out as a clear red shot. And um, Sweden won 2-1. So um, here's the, the, the two goals that they scored and here's the other shots that they had during the match. So now I'm going to take another way of solving exactly the same problem. And this is not using so much of an iterative solution, but using a uh, using directly applying some very nice functions in MPL soccer for plotting particular actions on 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 a pitch. Um, in the first example, I've, I've sort of done this the wrong way around because in the first example, we still do need to iterate through the rows. But there's a nice example here which Alexander created, and I've added some code to it, which directly plots each of the actions on the pitch. And so with a very short amount of code, you can just run it this way. This is just England shots in this particular case. What I've done is created a mask for England. So we just find the shots which are by England, which are team one in this particular case. Then we identify the location, X and Y, the outcome and the player name for every one of those shots. Then we create the pitch. And then we have this command inside um, MPL Soccer for pitch, where we can just scatter all of the shots onto the pitch directly and show them. So that's a very elegant solution for showing all of the plots in one go. In the example that's above it here, um, we couldn't use that exactly straight away because what we wanted to do is we wanted to have different things if it was a goal with the player's name and the different color and so on. So we still use the iterating through, but I've used the scatter command in MPL soccer in order to, um, and, and the annotate command in order to plot where the shots occurred. So here we iterate through England, same thing as before, um, put the put the plots in the um, plot, the, the goals slightly differently from the shots. And we have a nice shot diagram like this. So everything we're doing here really is just taking the actions. We have a data frame with all the stats bomb data of every everything that happened on the ball. We're picking out the things we're interested in. We're interested in shots and goals in this case, and we're coloring them in various ways in order to convey that information where the shots occurred from. And I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say about these um, things. Definitely, you've got to go and play around with them, try them out yourself. And really, the next stage for you is to try a challenge. So what happens in when we're using event data is we're just plotting the different events that occur during the match. And we've looked at shots in this case, but what you're going to do before you go onto the next page is you're going to have a look at passes. So the challenge for you is to create a data frame with just the passes in the match. You can use the England-Sweden match, or you can take in another match if you want to. Well, use the England-Sweden match because then, then you're actually doing the exercise. Plot the start point for every Sweden pass. And what I want you to do is assume that the Sweden are attacking left to right. In fact, the data assumes that Sweden are attacking left to right. Attacking actions tend to be left to right in the frame of most of the major data providers. And then once you've got all the plots of Sweden, plot only the passes made by Caroline Se Sager. Um, she's called Sara Caroline Sager in the in the database, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. And also, in addition to plotting the circles where the pass was made, I want you to plot an arrow to where the passes went. So you have to do a little bit of searching online for how you uh, plot arrows. Have a go at this task. Then when you've done it, then you can move on to the next page.